the spirit of our foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. The spirit of our foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. All right. Uh, let's start with uh, Genesis chapter two and verse eighteen. Let's let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Genesis chapter two and verse eighteen. All right, brothers, settle down. This is gonna be a lot of questions, a lot of reading. I got a few videos, but it's a lot of reading. A lot of reading is for the sisters, but remember. We got daughters, men. We have wives. We got to build them up. We got to make sure that they continue building themselves up in the scriptures and the examples of our foremothers. All right. All right. So let's read that. Genesis chapter uh, 2 and verse 18. We're going to read down to 24. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Uh -huh. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, let's see who peeped that out. Let's see who peeped that out. Okay. Uh... John Levi, John Levi, let's see if y'all peeped it out, because I always do this, I always want to make sure y'all reading and reading in between the lines, because there's precepts and understandings, there's levels of understanding to get you there. All right, what did you find? What did you see? Um, when God created um, the creatures, he made everything man and female, so when he said, um, as for Adam, he didn't have a help meet, everything else had a help meet. Uh, you, you, you almost there. You almost there, but uh, not, not close. Uh, Amazai, married men, married men, married men. Raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Amazai, what you got? Shalom leadership. So, when the Most High created man, uh, after He created Adam, He created them men and women. But for Adam himself, He didn't have a helpmeet at that moment in time. Nope, 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 nope. You remember when he made Adam, when he made Adam, Adam was the first man. When you read in Genesis chapter 2, all you're doing is reading Genesis chapter 126. All right, when man was created. That's when Adam was created. What you're reading in Genesis chapter 2 is what happened on the sixth day of when Adam was created. You understand? And when he brought all the beasts and all the all the beasts to him, let's read it again. I want you to see this. I want y'all to see this. Read 18. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man shall be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So he says, I'm going to make a help me for him. Right? Because watch this. I want you to see something. I want you to see something. I don't want to go past. The, 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 uh, mm hmm all right, got on. All right, go to Genesis chapter 1, read verse 24. Genesis chapter 1, verse 24. Uh huh. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, uh -huh. cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Uh -huh. And God saw it that it was good. Uh -huh. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea. All right, and that's it right there. Go back to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis it, chapter 2 verse 18. Read verse 19. Verse 19. Uh -huh. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field uh -huh. and every fowl of the air and brought them out and brought them unto Adam to see what he shall call them. Uh -huh. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Three. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. So, play the first video. Uh, it's not the first video. It's actually a uh, article. Uh, there's a reason we call blank man's best friend. Uh, 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 the Phil, uh, the Philadelphia Inquiry. 
All right. Uh, somebody blow it up. Somebody read for me. I I barely can see anything from this from this side. There's a reason we call dogs man's best friend. Uh huh. Dogs. There's a there's a reason we call them man's best friend. We call we can learn so many things from a dog's behavior, personality, personality, demeanor, resiliency, and most importantly, the willingness to provide to provide their family members with co- confidential, unconditional. unconditional love, loyalty, and companionship down to the very last breath. Mm-hmm. You come in the door from a long day's work. The dog doesn't judge you. He doesn't care how you're dressed or if you just had a really bad day. No matter the situation, your dog is happy to see you. You are greeted with the same enthusiasm each and every time you walk in mm-hmm. that in that door. A dog has the ability to live in the present moment. They don't regret regret the past or worry about the future. Mm -hmm. If we can learn to appreciate and focus on what's happening in in the here and now, we'll experience a richness of living. Stop right there. So when God created Adam and he brought forth every beast of the field to him and every cattle, weren't a dog a beast of the field? That's what I'm doing. But yet it wasn't enough. What did God have to make? A woman. A dog is not a man's best friend. His wife is. His wife is his best friend. That woman is his best friend. That's that woman that's supposed that's that person that's supposed to greet you at the door. No matter what y'all been through, she lives in the now, not the past, not in the future, but now. Remember the spirit of our foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. Alright? But let's read that last part again, that last paragraph about the dog. Cause I want I want it to sink in, sisters. Cause if if a brother prefers a dog before he prefers you, y'all got a problem. Listen, judge. Y'all got problems now. Hey, hey, Ch- officer. Ch- it's it's because those characteristics that we just read. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of sisters ain't learned that yet. The, mm. do- the dog could perform it. Damn. But, but a lot of sisters ain't learned that yet. All right, now sisters, let's read that. Let's read that again. That's the second- dog. The dog doesn't judge you. He doesn't care how how you're dressed or if you just had a really bad day. No matter the situation, your dog is happy to see you. You are greeted with the same enthusiasm each and every time you walk in that door. A dog has the ability to live in the present moment. They don't regret the past or worry about the future. If we can learn to appreciate and focus on what's happening in the here and now, we'll experience a richness of living. All right, let's go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Let's Genesis read. chapter 2. Verse 18. Verse 18. All, all the way down to 24. And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So all these, oh, cow, buffalo, chicken, cat, dog, none of those became his help me. Read. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found in help meet for him. Uh And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. Made he a woman. Read on. And brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. All right now. So a man shall leave father and mother, leave the people he knew his whole life and cleave unto his wife. And that wife, you remember, that brother ain't just choosing any type of woman. He's going to choose that godly woman. In order to know that godly woman, he must understand the spirit of his foremothers. You must understand what your fathers, your forefathers had with them in order to establish the covenant. Because if they had those women that were brickering all along the whole time, not encouraging, not in helping, not doing anything for you. 
You think they would have made it that far? I'm, while we read along, you're going to see how at any moment these women could have destroyed us. And we're going to go right into one. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Yeah, this, this one right here is blacked out in all the sisters' Bible. So, husbands, you might have to let your wife use your Bible right quick. <laughs> they don't want to remember this moment. But it happened. All right, Genesis chapter 3. Let's read verse. Let's go to 1. Let's read verse 1 down. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall surely, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. All right, jump to verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 13. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So you got to watch that, sisters. You're going to see it time and time again. Our foremothers would like to blame others. Or like to put the blame on something else instead of examining themselves. Read. <laughs> and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Read on. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Read. And the woman's. Unto the, woman. unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. I right, stop right there. Give me the... Man, I ain't post the article. Oh, mothers who regret having children are speaking up like never before. Let's pull that article up. I re... Mothers who regret having children are speaking up like never before. Let's read that. I regret having children in, in pushing the boundaries of accepted marital response, maternal response. Women are challenging an explosive taboo and reframing motherhood in the process. Blow it up. Yeah, I can't see nothing, bro. At first glance, Amy is like many busy young moms. She's 34, lives in Al Alberta, wor works full time, and is devoted to her five-year-old. I love my son with all my heart, she says. My life revolves around this child. Four nights a week from May to June are spent at sports fields, which she says all his schoolmates do it. So, he, so if he doesn't, he's left out. When discussing motherhood, however, Amy deviates from the marital script, maternal script, if she could make that choice over again, she says she wouldn't. She never wanted children. Hold up. Stop right there. Let's go back to, we're going to come right back to the article, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Genesis. Chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So our sisters are trying to escape the judgment of God. Your job was to bring forth children and to be a helpmeet to your husband. God says that is your job. So for women to say, I wish I never had a child, you say you wish you was never made. Right. Let's go back to the article. She never wanted children. 
I was very independent, she says. Her husband did. I would have been a deal breaker. It would have been a deal breaker. Parenthood put an untaintable strain on the marriage. Her husband wasn't in as involved as she wanted. They separated. Life is difficult, Amy re reports. Our child has two homes, and I'm still doing 90% of it on my own. All right. Stop right there. That's it on that one. Pull, bring the video, The Black Experience, American Negro, 1960s. We're going we're gonna to watch until 1 minute and 42 seconds. We're going to watch until 1 minute and 42 seconds. Put the volume up. This is Walter Baltrop. Sometimes on a Saturday night, if they can get a babysitter, Walter and I take our wives bowling. As you can imagine, Walter's a powerful bowler. He practically throws the ball down to the pin. Walter's wife, Wanzer, used to be a secretary. Walter is a top-notch social worker. He works in a community center with young people. Tony's the oldest child. She already attends nursery school. She's three years old and has a great personality. This is Saturday morning. This is the morning that Walter always tries to help out around the house. Many American men like to do a little work around the house. Even I like to wash the dishes now and then. On this morning, Walter's going to help with the breakfast. His specialty is pancakes. Wanza thinks that Walter's pancakes are, are a little too crisp, but she tries to humor him. But Tony finds them very tasty. I'd like you to meet another family here in Brooklyn. All right, that's it on that one. The that Smiths. should be that minute and 42 seconds. All right, what did we see uh, w that was contrary to that article that we seen in the 50s? Well, that's the 50s or 60s? 60s amongst our people. And contrary to that, what we read in the article. Amazai. In, in contrast to the article, the women back then... Uh, in the 60s, they would, you know, even though the husband did something and they didn't approve, they would still humor him and help him along the way. Right, right. And um, she she complained that she was doing 90% of the work, right? You got that scripture? Artisan. You can pull it. You can pull it. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. Uh-huh. Read it. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Uh-huh. Bear children. Do what? Bear children. Read. Guide the house. It says guide the house. You could you probably probably do 100% of the work. God says that's your that's your duty. Bear children and guide the house. You may have to work. That Proverbs 31 woman, she can she considered the field and bought it and put in work. Right. So just because she's working doesn't take away from the house. Her first position, her first priorities are the children in the house. In the 60s, you see how the women were rolling. The man, he helps out once a week. Says on Saturday, that's when he could really help out because he's off. So he helps out around the house where he can. Maybe it be the dishes sometimes. Maybe it be cooking breakfast. He does a little bit. He tries to help, but at no point where you should hang your head like I do all the work around the house. That's your job. So watch this. The spirit of our foremothers. Not one of them ever complained. Not one of them. When you read in the scriptures, not one of them complained, oh, I'm doing all this work. We know that you was able to do it because we had even harder work to do. So watch this. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Let's read verse 16. Remember Genesis. the spirit of our foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. 
Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That's another thing. Spirit of all four mothers, they understood their position. They understood that their husband was in charge. And they, they that was one way of teaching you hum, humility after the fall in the garden. That was a way to put you in check. Look, woman, sit down. Your husband makes the final decisions. You see, when you was making decisions, what happened, right? Now you can die now. All right, so watch this. But after that, one thing that she showed was, watch this. Uh, let's go to chapter 4. I think it's chapter 4. It could be chapter 5. Chapter 5, let me see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Chapter 5 and verse 4. Let's see if she says, forget all that, Lord. Genesis. Man, my desire is not going to be to my husband. Forget having all those kids. Forget having a child. Watch. Forget God in the house. Let's see. Read Genesis that. chapter 5 and verse 4. Uh-huh. And the days of Adam, after he had beget, begotten Seth, were 800 years. And he begot sons and daughters. He begot what? He begot sons and daughters. He had more children. And this was after Cain and Abel. So she knew her role. She knew she messed up. She accepted the judgment. Say, hey, I have to have more kids. I know my job. I'm not going to let that hold me back. After that, did you hear her falling off again? Nah, she learned from her mistake. Watch this. This is another one. Quiet woman. Because you'll see, you know, you'll see the brothers. You'll see the men, right? You'll watch camp videos. You'll watch, uh, you know, classes. And you'll see the men. But you barely see the wives. You barely see the wives of those men. And sometimes... You probably bump heads with their wives and don't even know they're married to them. Because the women are quiet. They do the work. They behind the scene. Watch this. Give me uh, Genesis chapter 6. Let's read verse 18. Genesis chapter 6 verse 18. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 18. Uh-huh. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark. Thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. All right. This is Noah. What did Noah have to do? Brothers, raise your hand. What did Noah have to do? Who's over there? That's Abel? No, that's Samson. Pass the mic to Samson. What did Noah have to do? Build an ark. He had to build an ark. All right, brothers, what we need to build an ark. Watch this. Watch this. Here we go. Let's see if brothers thinking. All right, this, this is, this is going to be funny. What do we need to build an ark? Yeah, we know that, bro. What do you think? What do we need to build an ark? Michael, I, I'm, I'm about to see if any uh, married brothers. Nope. We definitely need our wives. How? <laughs> um, so they can help us push this truth, you know, get everything. To ready. build an ark? Oh, to build an ark? Yeah. It sounds good, right? We need our wives. You're like, yeah, yeah, brother. You got it right, brother. Hey, yeah, we need our wives, bro. What you need from your wife to build that ark? We need help. Well, help. Come on, bro. Help. What you, what you need help? What you, with what? Damn, brothers don't eat when they go to work. Brothers be going to the vending machine. Be getting filled off them grandmama cookies. Samson. But it would help. While you out there building the ark, you need your wife to uh, prepare your meals, wash the kids, stuff like that. All of that is going on. Remember, all this is happening. Uh, Ham, Shem, Japheth, they're born already. They are born. Somebody got to wash the kids. Somebody got to wash the house. Remember, he's prophesying it's about the flood. Most High is about to bring a flood. Where's the wife at in all of this? Remember, everybody calling him crazy. Brother, it never rained. What the hell is rain, brother? What is rain? But you making up words now? You go, oh, this brother going to see now. So who's bringing the food to him while he's building this ark? How, how, what, what is he eating? 
The wife is preparing all of these things for him and guiding the house, taking care of the kids. She's doing this behind the scene. Think about it. If this woman was wicked, you think, let's read that again, Genesis chapter 6. Verse 18. Genesis chapter 6 verse 18. Uh-huh. But with thee will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons wives with thee. Because to populate the earth all he needed was his sons and their wives. He didn't need it. He didn't need his wife. Most I could have said nah. But he made it help me like unto himself. Let you know what type of wife Noah had. Right, how he, hey, officer, how did he have those kids? Because I damn sure know if he didn't have his clothes washed, if he didn't take a bath, his wife ain't laying down with him. Right. <laughs> so who you think washed his clothes? Who you think kept them fresh? Right. Because watch this, just, just to let you know. You about to say something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and not only that, um, with the emotional support, because this was a hundred years later, you get right. what I'm saying? So that means your faith... Basically, your wife helped boost up your faith. Right. So, meaning she has to have a level of faith and believing in the mission to help push you through when you when you about to you fall. You know what I'm trying to say? Right, right. Because watch this, right? Just to, just to bring you up on speed. Go to Genesis chapter 5 and read verse 32. Genesis chapter 5 verse 32. And Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So... And at 500 years old, this is when he started having his sons. He started having his sons at 500 years old. The same time when he was about to start building the ark. Now watch this. Can you pop three sons out in the same year if they're not triplets? No, you're going to have to wait. She's going to be pregnant during this time. So watch this. Read verse... Where it's at? Uh, da -da -da -da. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Commanded him. Uh, chapter 7. Chapter 7 and verse 6. Genesis chapter 7 verse 6. Uh -huh. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. All right. Give me that Bible dictionary. This is outside of the class, but this is to show you what this woman, what one of our foremothers was doing. Bible dictionary. All right. This is the definition of ham. I want y'all to all pay attention to this. From the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary. Ham. The youngest son of Noah born probably about 96 years before the flood. They're giving you an estimation of when he was born. About 96 years before the flood. The flood came in this 600 year in his life. He had his sons in his 500 years in his life. When he was 500, he started having his sons. Ham was born 96 years before the flood. Remember, it's going to take years for that child to age. Who's weaning those children? Who's taking, those t taking care of those children while the ark is being made? The spirit of your foremothers. Children, contentment, and courage. Because it's going to take a lot of courage to be b beside that man why everybody calling him crazy. Call him a hate group. Call him a hate group. Saying you in a cult. It's going to take courage to be beside that man. Because I know a lot of you women, when, they, when your husband brought this to you, that nigga crazy. Yeah. He crazy. For real. <laughs> he done lost his mind. <laughs> he crazy. Jesus ain't white. <laughs> this nigga crazy. <laughs> you about to say something? Yeah, black identity, identity extremists. extremists. Right. They're going to say all manner of wickedness about us. But you got to ask yourself, sister, are you, are you ready? Are you prepared to still stand next to your husband? All right. Uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 16. Your mic. Genesis chapter 8, verse 16. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 16. Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth. That's it right there. It says, so when he got out that ark, he got out that ark with his wife. Yeah, you about to be in that thing 40 days and 40 nights. Have to still take care of the animals and everything in there. He's going to need help. He has his sons. His sons have their wives. He have his wife. We know what else goes down, but we're going to need that. Watch this. Let's go on. Uh, let's go to Genesis 
chapter 12. Let's read verse 11 to 20. Genesis chapter 12, 11 through 20. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 11. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai his wife, uh -huh. Behold now, I know that thou art fair that thou art a fair woman to look upon. So uh, we husbands know our wives and our eyes, they're beautiful. That's the reason we chose them. It says beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We see our wives, there's something about them that we like. So same thing with Abraham. He's seen her, you're like, man, woman, I know how you built. You're fair. And what's about to happen, I'm going to need you to hold me down on this one. Because some of our wives... They'll think because sometimes we'll tell them, look, I need you to do this. That Why I got to do this? And this? There's a reason we tell you for these things. There's a reason why we tell you to do things a certain type of way. Read. Watch this. Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife. And they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Uh -huh. Say, say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. So my the spirit of your foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. I need you to lie. I need you to lie for me. And this is going to save my life. This is what I need from you. That's going to put it in the hot seat. Damn, you need me to save your life? Now watch this now. Now we about to put the balance. We about to scale up the balance now. Because you're going to see this woman had a, had a chance to be Cleopatra. That all black women swear they come from Egypt. She had a chance to be that. Because remember, Abraham wasn't that rich man yet. He wasn't that prosperous man yet. He was coming from his own place. He, he wasn't built up in stature just yet. So think about this. He says, I need you to lie. It was still Abram at that time. Now watch. Let's put it in context. Continue reading. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for, for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. So they seen uh, Sarai and still like, damn, she bad. Oh, Pharaoh gonna like this one. Pharaoh gonna like this one. He might give me a raise when I bring her. Watch this, read. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Uh huh. And he entered and, and, and he, he entreated, entreated Abram well for her sake. Now, oh, this your, this your brother? Hey, this your sister? Hey, man, look at here, man. Hey, I got you, bruh. Here, don't worry, man. You good in my land, bruh. Here, what you need? Asses, sheep, oxen. What else you need? You need jewelry, jewels. What you need, bruh? I got you. Don't worry. You're my brother-in-law now, all right? We good. <laughs> Watch this. Read on. And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. She, he gave all that to Abraham. Peep this now. The most high strategic on how he do things. Because if she would have, if she would have flipped the script at any moment, most high would have put her to death and Abraham would have got out with all of that. But watch this though. Verse Read 17. On. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Uh -huh. Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had and all that he had all those things that were given to him above say man go on, get now get all that I don't, I don't want it back go go the most high think about this she had the chance to say the hell with you Abraham I'm a queen of Egypt now she had that chance because he was going to take her to be his wife. That's what he revealed to Abraham. But the most high plagued him. He's like, these plagues ain't start happening until this woman came in my house. You know, because remember with kings, what did they do to the woman before they married them? All right, let's see if the men know. I'm about to say, let's see Michael. 
They gave him gifts. Ah, come on, bruh. You for real? You a king, bruh. You are a king. You gonna give a woman gifts before you take her as your wife? Come on, bruh. Man, come on. You a king, bruh. You don't know where this woman been? Sarah. More, I, mean, I try to give. I try to give them context clues or something. Sarah, <laughs> they, it has it in the scriptures. What do the king does? They had them purified. They purify the women. It takes time for that. I, I need to smell it out your pores. Yeah, I, I mean, I and you, you didn't brush your teeth for weeks, but it still smell like mint and leaves. <laughs> you gotta be. I'm talking about sweet, girl. You done ran three miles and still smell like blossoms, well cherry blossoms, whatever it may be. I don't know what y'all bathing. Some oils. It, it sinks in your pores. So that purification had to take place. So he ain't just, oh, yeah, she my wife. No, there were steps before he, he laid down with it and made her his wife. So before those things went down, Most High started playing in Pharaoh's house. But this shows you the spirit of our foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. Could we pull up the definition for contentment? Content? Because she had a chance to be a queen of Egypt. Let's see what our foremother did. Can we pull up the uh, definition for contentment? Contentment, the feeling yeah. that a person or a thing is beneath consideration, worthless, or... Not contempt, content. Content. T-E-N-T. Sheesh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Content in a state of peaceful happiness. Uh huh. Read that. The other one, verb. Verb. Satisfies. Uh huh. The other Satisfy one. Satisfies someone. Noun. A state of um satisfaction. S satisfaction. satisfaction. I think that's what it say. All right. So that contentment. Contentment. She was satisfied with what she had. I'm satisfied with my Lord. I don't need that four or five bedroom house. It's gonna take time before we get that. We're gonna shy. we're gonna be in this house, this two bedroom apartment, this one bedroom apartment until we grow. No matter how long it takes. As long as I'm by your side. That should be your mindset towards your husband. That was the spirit of your foremother Sarah. Before her name was changed to Sarah. But that was your for that was the spirit of your foremother. She had a chance to double everything she had, triple everything she had at that moment. Of course, as time progressed, she started seeing the Most High bless Abraham. But at this moment, she was in a position to have more than what Abraham could have provided for her at that moment. But yet, she followed her husband's guidance. She followed his counsel. Okay, I'll be your sister. Don't say nothing. I won't say nothing. All right, I'm going to keep you alive. I'm going to do whatever you need for me to do for you to stay alive. That's a help me right there. That's a help me. Yeah, sisters, take notes now. Take notes. All right, let's go to, you going to put some? Message. For real, message. SMS that thing. Genesis chapter 16. This old spirit of your foremothers. Y'all foremother did not play. Look at this. I want to see if y'all women could do that today. Well, not yeah, I can't do it today, but in the kingdom, y'all going to do it. But all praises to the most high. Watch this. In, in, in the time of Israel, this went down, sisters. This went down. I want to say, I know y'all can't do it today, but I'm trying to tell you. I, boy, let's read it, man. Let's read it. 16, let's read verse 1 down. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. Uh huh. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Uh huh. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Uh huh. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Read on. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan. Stop right there. The spirit of our foremothers. Children, contentment, and courage. For her to have got this woman and says, I can't have children. You marry my husband and bring forth children for me. How many of you women can share your husband? 
I, that, y'all won't, y'all can't do that today. Y'all cannot do that today. Every man, let's get that scripture just in case somebody be like, hey man, you better be like, Sarah, what's wrong with you? Let's get uh, uh, Ma- uh Matthews 19 verse 5. And you, if you got it back there, pull it, bro. Matthews. Just in case a brother get big head like, man, you see this? Be like your fourth mother. Let's read that. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 5. Uh-huh. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. Them, them two shall be one flesh. Not them three. Not them four. Not them five. Them two will be one flesh. All right. I think the other one, 1 Corinthians 7. Yes, sir. There's let's more get on that, that on, on Matthew's 9, 19. Let's, let's get straight to the point in 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. Chapter 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. His own. His own wife. Read. And let every woman have her own husband. You see that? That's singular. One. Only one, y'all. Let's go back to it. But the spirit of your foremother. She understood, yo, man, that's that's the inheritance of a man. That's what he he's gonna have to give something to his child. He don't, yeah, that, you know, that's his avenger. He, don't, I haven't, I'm damn near like 87. I can't, I can't give him any kids. She looked at the betterment of her household, even though she couldn't have kids. She got one of her servants to marry her husband, cause they knew the law. He can't just sleep with her. He he knew, she knew he had to marry her first. But there's still a position in the women. Even amongst your wives in the kingdom, you'll see that there's a position. The one that make it through hellfire with you, that's that mistress that you read in 16. That's the head woman in charge. That's just, just to let y'all know that. Uh, let's, uh, let's go back to Genesis 16. Genesis let's read verse 16, 3. Verse 3. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. Mm-hmm. Read on. Watch this. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when he saw... And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was was despised in her eyes. What ended up happening is, okay, she had a, she was able to have children for Abraham. Now she looked at Sarah like, oh, you good for nothing. I brought the first son of Abraham into existence. So she started despising Sarah. So watch this. Read on. Verse 5. And Sarai said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. Again, I have given- she took accountability. That's something that you've seen throughout since the beginning. They know when they messed up, and they're like, okay, I got to face it. I got to face the mistake that I made. I caused this to happen in our household because I didn't want to wait on the Lord. I wanted to see you happy. I wanted to do these things. Here. All right, so watch this. Look. You read. I have given my maid into thy bosom. Uh-huh. And when she saw that she had conceived... I, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. Uh-huh. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. You, Do to her as it pleaseth thee. You, you, uh, you, peep, you peep what Abraham, well, you understand, I got to stop using those words. You understand what Abraham said to Sarah? Did y'all, did y'all understand that, brothers? Did y'all peep that? Did y'all understand that? <laughs> What, what did you understand just now? Because I, I think it went over some of y'all heads. Right here, right here. I'm only, it's only one time. If you miss it, you miss it. Go ahead. Even though she had his, his son, uh, he was like, hey, I don't care about her. I, I care about you. I love you. You can do whatever you want with your maid. That's her. Because that, Hagar was his wife now. But he still considered her as what? A maid. That's your maid. Even though I had to marry her and she had to become my wife, that's still your maid. So there was a position in being that one. So watch this. Read on. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt... That, that's, that, yeah, that, go ahead, go ahead. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. So 
Mr. Sarah ain't play no games. You're not just going to talk to me like you're going to talk to me. Like You ain't going to just act like you. it's all good. I seen since you had that child how you've been acting. You need to straighten up. <laughs> The spirit of our foremothers, they weren't afraid to tell you how, like how it was. I gotta they, they went straight to your face like, look, as long as my Lord is okay with it, I'm about to check your behind. I'm still, I'm still head honcho over here. You, be, hey, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> hey, Sarah ain't play no games. Watch this. Watch this. Let's go to, uh, where we at? 16. That's 16. Uh... We're going to have to deal some things before we get to that. But 18, 18 and read verse. I just want y'all to understand something about Sarah. 18 and verse 11. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. So after the manner of woman is saying she, she no longer has her menstrual and stuff like that. She's that old. She's that old. Um, read on. Verse, Menopause, right? That, verse 12. Read. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am wax old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. So, yeah, she laughed. So, that's one thing that you'll see that sometimes our sisters, our wives will lack faith. They'll lack faith in the process. They'll be like, ah, that's... I don't see how that can happen. You see these things? Psst. These things pushing out dust right now. He say, should I find pleasure? Like, literally, I don't think Abraham can even get it up anymore. Like, we're both old. That's what she's, that's what she's, we're old. Like, Walmart. Like, Walmart, yeah, Walmart bags. <laughs> like, <laughs> say, but I got to sit them things up. Uh, read on, watch this. Verse 13. Hey, this all for mother. Got to say it like it is, man. This, she's letting you know, we old, baby. We old. Watch this, read. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, uh -huh. according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Now watch this. Read. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And you know when your wife lied to you in your face? <laughs> and you know she lied. All four mothers did that too, man. Sisters, y'all got to cut that out, man. Be honest with your husband, man. Don't be afraid. It's not like he could take your allowance away or something. <laughs> You're like, hey, wait. I tell my wife, I'll, I'll, check, I'll check her spirit. I say, this is mine. This is mine. In the beginning, she ain't too much understand when I kept on saying, this is mine. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. Until she finally, after, you know, a couple of classes and things like that, and she was looking like, damn, hold up. Everything that is yours is mine. <laughs> She finally peeped it. Yeah, we're one flesh. So everything that is yours is mine. We're still, a, we're still one body. So she understand that. So lying to me is like lying to yourself. Sisters, the spirit of your foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. Be honest with your husband. Say, baby, got too much hair, baby. Shave. Be honest with your husband. Baby. It's, it's, it's hanging too low now. The gut is it's, it's yeah, hanging too low. Saying, I, I'm, I, we got to be honest with one another. It is what it is. Hey, obviously, you know how you do that? You're like, hey, babe, um, we need to hit the gym. Yeah, we need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You yeah, say, hey, we, we, we yeah, need to we hit need the gym. All praises. <laughs> so be honest. Like, like, oh, my God. Like, come on. It's covering everything now. <laughs> I remember when you had the six pack. I remember when you were strong. <laughs> hey sisters, don't 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 lie to us. Be honest with us. Be have courage like your foremother. All right, let's let's go to the next one. Watch this. We in 18, jump to 21 now. 
21. The spirit of your foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. Watch this. Read that. Chapter 21 and verse 1. L read verse 6. Verse 6. Uh-huh. And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh. So this is after she had Isaac. Read on. So that all that hear will laugh with me. Uh -huh. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have give, given children suck? You see that? She's like, how, how can I have told anybody that I could still push out breast milk? I'm able to tell people, yeah, I could wean a child at my old age. And this is at 100 years old, just to let y'all know. Abraham was 100. Let me make sure. Yep. Read on. Watch this. For I have borne him a son in his old age. Uh -huh. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Uh -huh. Now and watch this. Read. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abram. Abraham mocking, wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Mm -hmm. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because it was of his what? son. And this thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Same thing what was going out before. You will say some things, and it may sound hurtful. It may sound, ah, this thing is going to be grievous to my husband if I say this way, if I say these things. Or, of course, you're going to season your word with salt, but you have to be honest with your Lord. It's going to be grievous to him, but your foremother had to let him know like how it was. Read it again. What verse was that, sir? 12. Verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, let it be not grievous in thy sight. Read verse 11. Verse 11. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let it, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. And we're going to come right back to Genesis. The spirit of your foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. Read. Every wise woman buildeth her house. It says every wise woman buildeth her house. Read. But the foolish plucketh it down with their hands. She seen as Isaac was just a child that they would have had problems if Isaac and Ishmael would have grew up knowing that Isaac was the promised son but Ishmael was the firstborn. She understood. She looked well to her household to where she went to her own husband knowing it would break his heart to say send Ishmael away. Send your firstborn son out to where God had to come and speak with Abraham like hey man don't, don't feel bad about this. This woman she spoke right to you. Send him out. Don't worry. I'm going to make sure he's taken care of but my covenant shall be with Isaac. So it says a wise woman is going to build her house. Not only that, but Sarah showed, showed to you that from the beginning, what she was made for, she always wanted to happen to, to bear children. She wanted that to the point where even at, at an age like this, it's impossible for me to have children right now. And even after the angel said it, she was like, ah, I can't, nah, I don't know about that one. But it was joyous for her to have a child. Even at her old age, where sisters nowadays feel like, nah, man, mm -mm, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose what Most High giving me. Nah, mm -mm, it's going to get saggy. Nah, it should be getting saggy for that one man that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Because that's all he's going to look at for the rest of the days of his life. So, sisters, the spirit of your foremothers. Damn near cry when they couldn't have children. And if we get the if we get the first Samuel, you'll see. You'll see. So let's go to the next one. Uh, Genesis chapter 24, 14. Let's read it. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 14. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say. Let me bring him up to speed. What happened? Abraham is getting old. He's about to die. He tells his servant, the one that had charge over his whole house, look, I'm about to die. I need you to go back to my own kindred and find one of the daughters of my people for my son. And 
he sends them away. Now this is the servant that's out in the land of Abraham's people. Let's read. Verse 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say. My let, bad. This is more to it. He says, how am I going to find a woman that would be good for my master's house, for the son of my master? And then he prays to the Lord, and this is what he comes up with. Read. Verse 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. Read on. We're reading all the way down to verse 33. Yes, sir. Read. And, and it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethel, Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her. With her pitcher upon her shoulder, uh -huh. and the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well, and filled her pitcher, and came up. So the spirit of your foremother, she's as old as, um, as Isaac. She's at a marriageable age. She's after the age of 20. She hasn't known any man. She's been waiting, patient. This is one of your foremothers, Rebecca. Now watch this. It takes a lot for one camel to drink and be satisfied. Can we pull that up quick? How much a camel needs to drink? How much can a camel drink? While you looking up, read, Officer Razis. Verse 17. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. You see that? It says, I will draw water for thy camels also until they're done drinking. You know she had to go back to that well, put it all the way down, bring it all the way back up, then take it to the camels. And do that for each and every last one until every last one of them was done drinking. Of course, it's a big thing to where all of them drinking all at once. But she did that without knowing this man from a cane of paint. Read. Oh, you, you got it? Yeah, we got it, sir. Pull it up. All right, uh, you can read that for me. A typical camel can drink 200 liters, uh -huh. 53 gallons of water in three minutes. <laughs> so Rebecca is making sure these camels have something to drink. We're going to find out how many they were. Let's read. Verse four. Oh, it was 10 camels, just to let y'all know. It Verse was 18. 10. Verse 19, and when, and when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also, until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the thorough, uh -huh. and ran again unto the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. Now, I want you brothers to pay attention to this. You single brothers, pay attention to this, because those spirits are dwelling in the daughters of Sarah. I want y'all to pay attention to this. Read. And the man wandering at her held his peace. What did he do? Held his peace. He wandered at her. This chick ain't going to stop drinking. She ain't going to keep, keep, she keep going back to the well. Your feet ain't tired yet, sister. Hey. He's wandering. And hey, officer, we not talking about, she not carrying no Kool-Aid picture. Right. Y'all, this ain't no Kool-Aid picture. She said she took it from off the top of her head. So you already know that big old bowl walking right. back and forth. Oh, man. So she did that for those 10 camels that the man was looking like. I know I prayed for this, <laughs> but this is like, like spot on what I prayed for. Right. This has to be her. Now, this is a woman that he chose that he was like, this is the guidelines that I'm going to choose for the woman that I'm going to give to my master's son. This wasn't no light woman. This woman put in work. That's what the foremothers need to do. The, the spirit of the foremothers put in work for their household. Watch this read. Verse 
21. Uh -huh. and, the, and the woman and the man wandering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Read. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking. The camels had done drinking. Meaning they said, man, this is enough, sister. <laughs> if, if the, you remember like the ass when it spoke? Right. If the camels could speak, they said, this is enough, sister. Stop going to the well. We finished. Yeah, she didn't even stop. Right. She kept going till they said they were done. Until the camels Dang. stopped drinking. And it was ten of them. Read. That the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. Uh -huh. And said, whose daughter out art thou? Uh -huh. Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? This brother was... He was like, yo, this, this woman is unbelievable. He says, here, here, hey, hey, is there a place where I could lay down? Where you from? Who are you? Watch this. Read on. And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. So and she she even helped him with a place to stay. Watch this, read. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. Uh huh. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who have not left dispu disputes destitute. destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Uh -huh. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. So she ran to her mother's house and told them these things. Now watch this. Read on. And Rebecca had a brother, and his name was Ladan, Laban. Uh -huh. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. Remember and Laban it, now, and look what he's going to do so you can understand when he gives, when Jacob comes on the scene, why he treats Jacob that way. Read. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets. Wait up, he did what? And it came to pass when he saw the earring and the bracelets upon his sister's hands and when he heard the words of Rebecca his sister saying thus spake the man unto me that he came unto the man and behold he stood by the camels at the well uh -huh. and he said come in thou blessed of the Lord wherefore standest thou without for I have prepared the house and room for the camels uh -huh. and the man came into the house and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and the water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. Uh -huh. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine heir. And he said, speak on. Now watch this. Jump down to 55. Verse so 50. you remember when Laban seen, when he seen his sister, the first thing he saw, he saw the earring and the, bla the bracelet. <laughs> like, damn. So yeah, now now what that dude said, I want y'all to understand that. All right, go jump the 55 and read through 67. So this sister was about work. Verse 55. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten. After that she shall go. Uh huh. And he said unto them, Hinder me not. He's like, nah, man, I need to go back to look. My my master's about to die. He gave me this commandment to go do. I found her. This is her. I need to go. Read. Seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, send me away that I may go to my master. Uh -huh. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. When you read the story, when you read up above, they already agreed that yeah, okay, that's what the most high said. Okay, yeah, we'll give it we'll give you give you uh her on to you so you could go take to your master. But watch this. Right here he says, I right, call the damsel now. Watch this, read. Verse fifty eight. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Would thou go with this man? When and you read, they already gave him liberty to take her. Now they say, all right, come over here. Because they was trying to hustle him. When you read it, they try to hustle him. And then they brought Rebekah in. Rebekah was a different breed. She wasn't like her, uh, her brother, Laban. They were not the same. Watch this. Read. And she said, I will go. It's going to take courage. The spirit of your foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. She didn't know Isaac. She didn't know what he looked like. She didn't know nothing about the man that she was going to marry and spend the rest of her life with. Read. 
And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abram's servant, and his men. Uh-huh. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. We read it all the way to 67. And Rebekah arose and her damsel, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the, and the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Lahorai, for he dwelt in the south country and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide uh-huh. and he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold the camels were coming and Rebekah lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac she lighted off the camel uh-huh. for she had said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us uh-huh. and the servant had said it is my master therefore she took a veil and covered herself so before she even got off the camel she already inquired who's that who's that Oh, that's 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 Isaac right there. <laughs> she already got ready. <laughs> she got ready. She knew what she was going into, but it takes courage, and she took it on full force. No shine, no, no. I'm about to spend the rest of my life with this man. Hey, I'm about to get to know you right now. Now nah, ain't no oh, let's wait. Nah, I'm about to find out right now what you made of. Watch this, read. And the servant told Isaac all things he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. So remember, Isaac ain't no light brother. Isaac, okay, wait up. My father told you to go find her. And when you was over there, you prayed to the Most High. It said that this, if the woman would feed, would give me the drink and my camels a drink, that she's the one ordained. And it happened just like that. And she was of my father's house. Yeah, she's the one. Yeah, I just looked up the word light to it. Uh when she saw saw him, he, she fell off the camel. She like, who is that? You know, she you know she fell off. Yeah, she yeah she fell. Off. So watch this. Uh, read on. Where where are we at? Verse sixty seven. Yeah, sixty seven. Read it. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So that's a beautiful thing. Watch this. We about to we about to go in a little bit more. Go to Tobit now. We're gonna jump the Tobit. We're gonna jump the Tobit. Lord's will. We can have a second part of this class. The spirit of your foremothers' children. Content. And courage. Uh, let's go to Tobit chapter 1. Tobit chapter 1, and let's read verse 19. Tobit chapter 1 and verse 19. And when one of the Ninevites went and complained of me to the king that I buried them and hid myself, understanding that I was sought for to be put to death, I withdrew myself for fear. Then all my goods were forcibly taken away. Neither was there anything left me beside my wife Anna and my son Tobias. All right, so they took everything that he had, but remember he had to run away because they was going to kill him for burying the dead of Israel. So uh, the only thing that was left that they didn't take away from his house was his wife and his son. At any moment, she could have said, man, to hell with him. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know where he's at. Watch this. She had to have courage. She had to have strength to, st- to stay there and make sure, look, I'm not going to defy myself. I don't know what happened to my husband. I'm going to wait. Lord's will, he's in peace. Watch this. Read on. And there passed not five and fifty days. Not even fifty-five days passed by, Reed. Before two of his sons killed him. That was the king that was that was seeking to kill Tobit. Jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. And Akai... Acherus, entreating for me, I returned to Nineveh. Now Akai Acherus was a cupbearer and keeper of the signet and steward and overseer of the accounts and Sar- Sarchetonus appointed him next unto him and he was my brother's son. So his nephew, his nephew was appointed to the king as a cupbearer and watch, jump down to chapter 2, read verse 1. And chapter look what 2 happened. verse 1. Uh-huh. Now when I was come home again. Because he was able to come back because the former king was dead and his, his nephew was able to bring him back, read. And my wife Anna was restored unto me. Remember he didn't see her he didn't see her for more than 40, 40 days, less than 
turned 55. He ain't see her for a while. So it was like two months. Close to two months he ain't see his wife. And she ain't see him. She ain't know what happened to him. Read. Was restored unto me with my son Tobias in the feast of Pentecost. So she, so she waited for her husband. The spirit of our foremothers. She ain't give up on her husband. Watch this. Jump to verse 8. Verse 8. But my neighbors mocked me. This is said, another thing. Same thing with the, in the time of Noah. When you're doing good and you know that other people don't see what you're doing, you are being mocked just like some of us men, some of us sisters. Well, some of you sisters, you know when you started keeping God's commandments, your family was mocking you. Same thing back then. We was always being mocked for doing good amongst our people. Watch this, read. But my, na- my neighbors mocked me and said, This man is not yet afraid to be put to death for this matter, who fled away, and yet, lo, he birthed the dead again. This- See, his wife ain't come say, Boy, you don't learn? Damn, you don't learn? They just kept you away from us for like 55 days now, and you go back doing the same damn thing? Watch this. Read on. The same night also I returned from the burial and slept by the wall of my courtyard, being polluted, and my face was uncovered. And I knew not that there were sparrows in the wall. And my eyes being opened, the sparrows muted warm dung into my eyes. And a whiteness came in my eyes. And I went to the physicians, but they helped me not. Moreover, Achaeacharis did nourish me until I went into Elamias and my wife Anna did take women's work to do so she ain't belittle him see that's what you get for burying the dead she, she, she ain't say I told you so she seen that her husband was incapable of putting in work she went and found work that's a help me your Lord is going through tough times. You're supposed to find ways to help him out. That's Not, oh, you need to do better. You need to do this. You need to do that. Why don't you do something? Mm. Read. And my wife, Anna, did take women's work to do. Uh-huh. And when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. So what we're about to read right now is a godly marriage argument. This is how godly people argue. Read. (laughs) And when it was in my house and began to cry, I said unto her, From whence is this kid? Is it not stolen? Hey, how you got this goat? How you got this lamb? You done stole the lamb, didn't you? I understand I'm blind, but you ain't got to steal nothing, baby. (laughs) Watch this, read. Render it to the owners. Go give it back, man. Whoever you found it from, go give it back. Whoever you took it from, go give it back. Watch this. For it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. Man, you know we can't eat nothing stolen. I know I'm blind, but I ain't dumb. Read. But she replied upon me, it was given for a gift more than wages. Lord, this was given to me more than wages. They paid me. I actually got money for the work I did. But this was given extra. Why? Read. How be it? I did not believe her, but bade her... But bade her render it to the owners. That and part was, why you always lying? Why you lying? You ain't got to lie to me. I know I can't see, but you don't have to lie to me. Read. And I was abashed at her. The word abashed means embarrassed. He was embarrassed of her. Read. But she replied upon me, where are thine alms and thy righteousness, de- righteous deeds? Behold, thou and all thy works are known. So you got to understand that. That's a cut right there. That's a cut. You think they forgot about you? You think all the good that you've done to your people that there's not one good man that's seen the good works you've done? That was a cut. Letting them know, because cause at this moment, this, he's at his lowest. He think there is no help out there. I be, I'm the only one bearing my people. Ain't nobody helping us. We the only, we the only help that we got. She had to correct them. Like, no, God is not going to forsake you. And you remember how God helps. He helps through other people. Read that again. Where art thine arms? Where art thine arms and thy righteous deeds? Behold, thou and all thy works are known. She had to check him. Your works speak for yourself, Lord. This is why I got this kid in this house. It was because of what you did. Mm. About to say something? Yes. Can I get a script? Yeah. Uh, let me get. go to First Peter chapter 3. Hey, hey, make sure y'all in queue with uh, headquarters. I'll make this quick. 
First Peter chapter 3. Let's see what she did. The wish she used wisdom. That's what that was. That was wisdom given to her by God. Right. First Peter 3 and 1, sir? Yes, sir. The book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Read. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. By the conversation of who? Of the wives. So that's what she did. It says that if any be not in obedience to the word. Because he was calling her a liar. But she wasn't. Mm -hmm. She wasn't lying. She told him the truth. But in that, in turn, knowing that she was in the right, she didn't do anything wrong. Did she jump out the spirit with him? Say, oh, I don't know who you talking to? I ain't lying. Say, no, 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 no. say how can your blind behind know if I stole it or not? Right. She ain't say that. Nah. <laughs> she used wisdom that was given to her by God, and she won him back over with her conversation. Right. She turned it back on him. All your good works that you have done, you think that someone wouldn't bestow upon you gifts? Right. That's wisdom. All praises. All praises. All praises. Let's get uh, to, 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 to where we at. Tobit chapter 5, verse 17. Tobit chapter 5, verse 17. But Anna his mother wept and said to Tobit, Why hast thou sent away our son? Is he not the staff of our hand and going in and out before us? Uh -huh. Be not greedy to add money to money, but let it be as re ref Refuse in respect of our child. So she was content. The money that she sent, that uh, Tobit sent Tobias to go get, she was content. She says, we don't need to add money to money. This is our only child. I would hate for something to happen to him. So at this, she is content. Tobit is blind right now. She's the one working. She's content. To say, hey, I understand you could go get, he could go get more money, but I would rather have you and him at the house and knowing both of y'all are safe than having him go out and him die. I could continue working till I die. You could stay blind. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to do what I need to do to provide for this household. That was contentment right there. Well, watch this. Read on. For that which the Lord has given us to live with does suffice us. She says, we're good with what we got. Read. Then said Tobit to her, Take no care, my sister. He shall return in safety, and thine eyes shall see him. Uh -huh. For the good angel will keep him company, and his journey shall be prosperous, and he shall return safe. Then she made an end of weeping. She did what? Then she made an end of weeping. So that courage. She had to have faith in her Lord's words. Okay, he's going to come back. She stopped weeping right after he said that. She sucked all that up. Okay, whatever I got going on, let me cut it off. This is what my husband say. I'm going after what my husband say. There wasn't no rebuttal for that. She trusted him. Trust all praises. Watch this. Go to Tobit chapter 7 verse 16. Tobit chapter 7 verse 16. Remember the spirit of our foremothers. Children, contentment, and courage. Read that. After Reguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber. So what ended up happening, Tobias gets to one of his cousin's houses, and he's about, he, well, they just signed the, the marriage papers. And he's about to go into the marriage chamber. Remember, this woman, this sister that he's about to marry, all the men before her, all the men before Tobias was put to death before they even laid with her. Before they even slept together, Asmodeus strangled those men to death. All right? Read. Seven After verse. Reguel called his wife Edna and uh -huh. said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber and bring her in thither. Which when she had done as he had bidden her, she brought her thither and she wept and she received the tears of her daughter and said unto her, Be of good comfort, my daughter. The Lord of heaven and earth give thee joy of, this, of thy sorrow. Be of good comfort, my daughter. So same thing 
to this day. Some of our women, some of our women, their mothers are not in their lives or their mothers passed away. But contrary, you still have mothers in the congregation. And that's what every mother in, of the bodies of Israel, wherever we at, should be to their daughters. Be of good comfort, my daughter. The Lord of heaven and earth give thee joy for this thy sorrow. Be of good comfort, my daughter. That's what all the mothers of Israel in the, con in the congregations, that's how they see you young daughters. And you should not want to sell yourself short going through a backdoor marriage or giving it up easy to any man and you trying to keep it a secret that would destroy the hearts of the mothers who who's been an example to you and continue being an example and want you to be taken uprightly in marriage all right go to tobit chapter 8 we're going to read verse 1 through 8 let's let's speed it up tobit chapter 8 and verse 1 uh-huh excuse me and when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. Uh -huh. And as he went, he remembered the words of Raphael and took the ashes of the perfumes and put the heart and the liver of the fish thereupon and made a smoke therewith. The witch smell, when the evil spirit had smelled, he fled into the utmost parts of Egypt. So you, so remember this, right? You have to, you have to put this in the perspective. You go uh, in context and also from this sister not ever seeing this done before. This ain't no sacrifice. What the hell is this brother doing? Yeah, this brother just took perfume and, and uh, fish liver and just lit something up in the room. Like this brother doing witchcraft over here. But watch this read. And the angel bound him. And after that, they were both shut in together. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise and let us pray that God will have pity on us. Uh -huh. Then began Tobias to say, Bless art thou, O God of our fathers. And blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve his wife for an helper and stay. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said it is not good that men should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. Reverse eight. And she said with him, Amen. She said with him, Amen. She agreed with him. The spirit of our foremothers, children, contentment, and courage. It's gonna in a marriage, it takes for y'all to agree together to get things done. In order for things to move smoothly, y'all will have to agree together. There's plenty of, and not only that, you're actually agreeing to him. That's what you're agreeing to. You're agreeing to your husband. Because that's who your desire is supposed to be on to. You're supposed to agree unto your husband. So when your husband says, you know what, I like that. That was his choice to agree with what you recommended. But he never has to say what you say we're going to do. He never has to do that. He has the final say so. And it's because of what your foremother did. Genesis chapter 3, chapter 2. <laughs> Black, white out. But let's read that again, that last part. And, and she said... And she said with him, Amen. She said with him, Amen. She had to have courage. You remember, she wept with her mother because she's like, "This seven men already died, and we about to make this the eighth. You have to have courage. All four mothers had courage. Think about this. Before this brother could even lay with her, he dropped dead. <laughs> You, what's that song? Uh, that it's 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 a bad song, but yeah, but her milkshake killing everybody in the yard. <laughs> it's killing everybody. They 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 ain't lay with her. They were put to death. They were put to death. Hey, Rachel waited for a godly man. I mean Rebecca. Rebecca waited for a godly man. She could have found any man around there. I'm sure as beautiful as she was, as much work as she put in, I'm sure there was plenty of men getting at her. This is Sarah right here in the book of Tobit. Seeing seven men die before her eyes. And this is about to be the eighth. What makes you different from any other man? All the other men were of the house of Israel. What made you any different from them? She had to have courage. She had to believe in the word of God. Tobit chapter 10. Let's read verse 12. 
Toby chapter Toby. 10, verse 12. This is a mother. This is a mother-in-law in Israel. The spirit of all four mothers. Children, contentment, and courage. Let's read that. Tobit chapter 10 and verse 12. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which are now thy parents, that I may hear good report of thee. And he kissed her. Edna also said to Tobias, The Lord of heaven, restore thee, my dear brother, and grant that I may see thy children of my daughter Sarah. Do what? That I may see my children of thy daughter of my daughter Sarah before I die. The, the mothers know. Look, woman, you better bring kids for your for your husband. You better bring them out. I want to see kids before I die. Read. That I may rejoice before the Lord. Uh -huh. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. So if you got married, right? You got married. And the mother never said nothing to you. Culturally, this is would be a, this would be the conversation that our foremothers would have with the son. That's going to be given to her daughter. Don't do my daughter evil. I raised this woman to be upright, to upkeep the house, to take care of the children, to be a help meet onto you. Don't take that for granted. Don't abuse her. Don't entreat her evil all the days of her life. Do good onto her because I know I raised her right to be a help meet onto you. So that goes for us husbands. Yeah. When dealing with your wives, you got to make sure you, you're not entreating her evil. But doing her good all the days of your life. You got something? Yeah, so when the part where it says, uh, wherefore, do not entreat her evil, you know. So that goes into, you know, uh, in the, you know, growing up, you know, our, probably our yeah. fathers or stepfathers would uh, get drunk. And when they're drunk, they would cuss out their, our mothers, you know, or beat them up. So that goes into us ourselves. You know, we can't entreat our wives, you know, call them outside of their names, you know. So we have to treat them. As that, as the weaker vessel, and not mis mistreat them or call them out their names. Right, right. You know, so that's that's one way we, we should not treat our wives. Yeah. All praises. Not only that, what what person? Think about this. You you got a job, right? If yo if yo boss would give you uh, incentives and raises every year, would you ever leave that job? Nah, you'll be happy for that job. You'll be like, oh, praise you, give me all my off days, everything, my feast days off. I got every day I want off, and I get raises like every year. He give me gift cards, all these things on my high holy days. If we understand that in the worldly concept, why don't we understand that in marriage? That you can encourage your wife in a lot of things. Same thing with you wives. Your foremothers can encourage us men in any and everything. You have that ability. You have to know how to use it. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>